I'd like to share with you an installation of the Michelec Revolver Spring Kit. And the spring kit will consist of a reduced power trigger return spring and a specially contoured mainspring. So the whole idea behind these parts are to reduce the trigger pull and also give you a very fast trigger return speed. Give you an idea, we, take, we have a stock Smith & Wesson L-frame here. I'll put a trigger pull gauge on to give you an idea what the double action is and uh, we'll take it also on a single action. So let's do a double action here, a pull. We've got an empty gun. We'll put the spring gauge on it and uh, let's see what we can get. And it's actually right around 12 pounds on that pull. Let's do one more, one more pull. And that one's over. So it's over 12 pounds and on single action, let's go ahead and do another presentation to the trigger and we've got uh, four pound 13 ounces so what the spring kit is going to do for this is reduce the pull of course there again about exactly about four pounds 13 ounces so what I'm looking for in competition on my competition guns or my target guns I want a very fast trigger return spring so it sets the finger up for the next shot very quickly. And the way the, the stock guns are set up, it has to shoot every brand of ammunition that's available in that caliber. But guys who shoot competition or target, they tailor their ammunition to the spring. So you see a lot of guns there will set them up at about seven and a half pounds double action. That's about where I like mine. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna install this spring kit. So I would suggest that you have a qualified gunsmith do it. And you might wanna show them this video. So I'll give you an idea of how to install this. We're gonna go ahead and make sure the revolver is totally empty. I have an L-frame here. I'm gonna pull the stocks off of it. There again, if you wanna use this spring kit, we always recommend that you bring it to a gunsmith and have it installed. But I'm gonna show you how I do it. And uh, I've done it a couple of times before. What I was looking for in competition was a very fast trigger return spring uh, setting, spring setting. And I'll give you an, an idea of what that looks like once I get the stocks off of the, off of the revolver. All right. So the way the gun comes from the factory is set up to shoot any ammunition. But if you notice, when you release the trigger, it has a little bit of a, a step to it. You notice what happens when I release the trigger, there's a hammer block that goes under the hammer. And that's one of the safety mechanisms in a Smith & Wesson revolver. So the spring settings that the Michelec spring accomplishes, it gives it a very fast and smooth trigger return cycle. So when I shoot competition or speed shooting, to me, the feel on the trigger when it's released forward is very important. And that's the, why this spring kit actually came about. So we've got an empty gun, we've got the stocks off. We're going to pull the side plate off and the way I do that of course you want to use the right screwdriver this is a hollow ground tip and it won't damage the head of the screw so what I usually do when I do a side plate is as the screws come out of the side plate that's the relationship that I'm going to put them back into the frame of course this one is the only place it's going to go it holds the holds the cylinder and it's totally different than the other two and on some Smith & Wessons, these two screws are different, different uh, lengths. So uh, I'm gonna put them the same way they come out. And that's how I'm gonna reassemble. So I'll lay them out in the sequence that they were taken out of the gun. So to take the side plate off, what you wanna do is get you a soft faced hammer like this. And if you tap the back of the frame, you watch the side plate. This is separate from the frame. So if you tap it just a little bit, you see how it came up? You don't have to stick a screwdriver underneath there and get all crazy with it. Just tap the end of the frame with a soft-faced piece of wood or a, or a hammer. And then the side plate comes right off. So we have a little safety here. That comes out. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to release the spring pressure on the trigger return mechanism here. I recommend you have safety glasses to do this. That spring is really under a lot of pressure here. And that's the spring itself that we're gonna replace. And that pushes the trigger mechanism forward after you fired a shot. So we're gonna go ahead and release that. You can take 
screwdriver and do that and pry up underneath the uh, rebound bar and it came right out. On some Smith & Wessons there are a over travel adjustment rod in this in this slide assembly. It might have a piece in there, a piece of metal, a rod, and that actually limits the over travel on the trigger. So this one does not have that. I'm going to put it back in. And next thing we're going to do is release the pressure on the mainspring with this screw on the bottom of the grip. And do it as so. Just take the pressure off of it. And I don't have to, I really don't have to take the hammer out of the frame to do this. I'm not trying to release the hammer. So I've got the spring removed. And this little stirrup here on the new guns is a separate piece from the hammer. So if it flips out of there, you might have to pull the hammer to put it back. But I've used caution to where I, I left it in the gun. So we're going to take the new spring and, and install it. Uh, you want to be aware that they actually make a, they, they make a correct tool for this application. I'm going to use a punch. Uh, you really want to be careful uh, that when you do this, you don't impale your finger with a screwdriver. Just a little tip. I know you want to use a screwdriver to do that. A punch works really good for it. With the proper size, it'll work really good for that. This plastic with the taper fits in the spring, and you can push it down really easy with that. And the main spring next. Uh, go ahead. I like to hook it to the hammer first, of course, uh, to get it in the, light, in the right spot. Put it into the frame as such. Put a little tension on it to keep it from falling free of the revolver like this. And at this time, if you want to put a little oil in there, you could do that. Put the safety back. What I'll do with this safety bar is to put it in and push it all the way to the front, to the top like that. It'll make the side plate go on a lot easier. And we'll do that. Put the side plate in. Put these two spots forward of the side plate and on top and tap it gently with a soft soft face well, safety slipped out of spot there see it didn't want to seat I was trying to pick it up to show you and the safety fell to the bottom position and the slot and the side plate will not go back on it has to be maintained in this upward position like that so I'm gonna have to hold it up in that position for that to go in properly just like that Tap it in, and so it's assembled. And I'm going to put the screws back in the same way they came out, same orientation, and just lightly snug them down. And then we'll go to the, the mainspring setting. And what I'm looking to do on the mainspring is to find a setting at about seven and a half pounds. I find that works really good with the trigger return spring. And it functions with most ammunition with a properly seated primer. And it's about where I like to run my competition guns. At about that, that about that range, seven and seven, seven and a half pounds. All right. All right, so we assemble, we empty. That's that's pretty close. Just just, let's go ahead and put a trigger gauge on it, see what it, what it says. So let's just run a double action test on it and see where we are. All right, let's run a, run a couple of cycles on it. That's still a little bit more than I like. There again, what I usually do with this, I'll take it out to the range and find all right, let's try it again. Get in a position where I can show you what I'm doing here. Yeah, it's about seven, right at seven, right at a little over seven pounds. We'll try a single action pull. And that brought it to three pounds, four ounces. So I took a pound off the single action and about, ooh, And about six pounds off the double action. You can hear the difference in the gun. It feels now it's going to be sensitive to ammunition changes. So uh, most of the guys who shoot competition, a target will tail their ammunition for this spring setting. Another thing 
that I like to do. Of course, I, like, I want to bring it out to the range in this condition and actually shoot it with the ammunition that I want to shoot in it. And if it doesn't work, you can, you can tighten it up or you can loosen it up. You notice the mainspring tension screw is protruding from the frame, whereas a factory setting, let me bring it to a factory setting. This is something, give you an idea how much difference it is. That's the factory setting. It's relatively flush. So my setting was, say, this tall out of factory. So what I do, I take a dial caliper and try to get a setting so I know it's 80, it had 80, 80 thousandths worth of projection this way. So it's, a, it's actually 80 thousandths too long on the mainspring. So what I would do before I would cut this tension screw would take the firearm out to the range, shoot it with my ammunition of choice. And if it runs really good, I'll take this screw out of the frame and cut the back side of it 80 thousandths off. You can take your dial caliper like this, get a measurement on it, and then take 80 thousandths off of it, and then reattach it and torque it down in the frame. If you don't want to do that, you can leave it protruding and put some blue Loctite on it and leave it set that away, and that'll, that would uh, bring you to that setting. You Loctite it in, and if you wanted to change your spring rate or something, you can do that later. So that's the way I would set it up, and that's the way I like my guns to feel. And what I'm looking for is that really crisp, fast trigger return spring. Because when you're shooting double action, the trigger release is probably, well, it is more important than the trigger pull. So that's the Mitchell X Spring Kit installed. Get some.